Hi, Trish. <laughs> I love your shirt. That's so cute. Is it Seahawks? You're unmuted, so I can't see you. I can't hear you. Let's see if I can unmute. Oh, I have to unmute you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, lo I just lost the picture, so hold on. Oh, weird. I can see you. Can you? I can't see anybody. Hold on. It's weird. There we go. I found it. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm okay. Just, you know, I did a couple fun Easter things. I saw that I was going to say that I love it because you had mentioned about turning it into a bomb bomb video and sending out to your database. And I never, um, I don't think like that next level. So I really enjoy that. Um, I'm going to do that. So it's good. Really fun. And thank you for sharing that because that's how we grow together. And well, and I'm going to do a video um, with the Easter bunny tomorrow. I'm oh. going to post it on the KW and maybe thrive that way. And if people want to use it, they can use it. The Easter bunny's not speaking. He's just holding, holding up cards. <laughs> Happy Easter. Sorry. I, I can't give you hugs and kisses. Got to stay six feet away. You know, my friend and I are going to work up the dialogue and do the flip cards. And so she's going to video that. So it's a message from the Easter Bunny. Oh, nice. So that people can use that and, and then even send that to their clients or post it on their own pages. Do you guys remember yeah. what the password was to get into this? Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. and Josh were texting me like, hello. Hi, Robin. Hi, Brandy. You guys are on mute, so I'll hit you really quick. Unmute. This is the one with the 90, 90, 90 guy, right? Yes. I love him. Yeah, he's awesome. Very awesome. Robin, how are you doing? Good? I can't hear you, Robin. You're still muted. Hi, Brandy. Hi. I love your background. Hi, Craig. Oh, I was going to change Let me it. see if I can unmute you. I feel bad there was another Zoom going on with the office and I ended it. So hopefully it wasn't something important that they needed because <laughs> they did not. Katie, I'm going to unmute you. We're taking priority. Yeah. Ours are better. Yeah, exactly. Just give some time. Hi, Josh. Okay. I'll unmute you, unmute Katie. I got unmuted, that's dangerous. I know. <laughs> unmuted everyone, so that way you guys can mute yourself. I'll mute you guys back if it becomes a problem. So just mute yourself on your end. In the meantime, we'll give a couple minute, more minutes to get some more people on. I know there's a few that are trying to get in. Hi, Nicole. Hi, JLo. What's up, J Lo? Hey. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Amazing. I love this picture, Trigger. Right. Which one did you paint today? <laughs> <laughs> Those are awesome. That was a fun team building project. We brought an artist in and our whole team painted for an hour. It was actually kind of fun. That is really cool. I love that. What, did they all have to paint houses or was it just whatever? It was the theme. It was a theme, yeah. Hi, Kelsey. Travis. Coming. Okay. Get my little camera out here. So Nicole, what I might say, depending on how background noise goes, it'd be really good to have open mic, but if it gets to too many, maybe everybody just goes on mute and then unmutes to talk. Yeah, that's what I was going to do next. She was going to forcibly mute us, so. Uh -huh. Yeah, we do that. We ran a webinar recently. You guys are doing much better ready for a market center in Northern California. And, oh my gosh, like 200 people to keep up behind the mute button, and it was a disaster. So you guys are doing amazing. That's crazy. Hi, Lindsay. Hi. How are you? How are the boys? They're good. They're excited that there's no more school for the year. Oh. <laughs> uh. 
my kids are not excited about that, but they are all single, my two teenage boys, and thought they oh. it was like mingling time, like get a summer girlfriend, and that's not happening, so. Yeah, um, mine are nine. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay. Right. Gonna, rock and roll, Nicole. Yep, I'm going to mute everyone and then unmute you guys. You're muting him. Okay, unmute Josh. Thank you. Craig. Okay, so a lot of you guys have met Craig when he came in and did our 90 and 90 class. So, and you guys just loved him and wanted to bring him back. So I just wanted to bring him here and have him share all these wonderful tips and tricks that he's been emailing to me. I coach with Josh. Josh is on the call as well. And you guys will get to meet his amazingness. So I'm, I'm not great at introduction. So I'll let you guys take it away. <laughs> yeah, we'll move really fast because I, I, I value your guys is time I'm thankful that you're spending time with us and I want to get to the value but for those of you that don't know who we are we're bigger coaching and consulting uh, for me personally I'm the founder of the company I've been in real estate over 20 years I've closed over 5,000 homes until recently uh, which is how I got to know your amazing franchise um, as I owned a bunch of KW franchises six in total had about a thousand agents doing two billion in sales volume and that's how I got to know uh, Dennis and Pam Ranch so very well. And they let us come up and speak with you guys a few months ago. So my goal today with my business partners, Josh Cooley and Katie, is the world is kind of crazy. And there's some really great things that are happening in, in the real estate world. And we want to give you some strategies that might be able to help you literally leave 35, 40 minutes from now and go and give some love to your community and get some more business. That's my goal for today. Who are you, Mr. Cooley? Hey, who am I? Uh, Josh Cooley. I'm here in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, I've been selling real estate for 12 years. Uh, I've got a team here. Uh, I've got a brokerage in Southern Oregon, Keller Williams, that I am currently uh, the owner of. That's got five different offices in Southern Oregon. Uh, coached for five years, 15 years. I, I'm, a, I'm a coach. Um, love working with Craig and Katie and working with uh, like-minded agents that like to kick butt and get things done. Uh, my team here in Eugene is working really hard through this. So I'm on the front lines just like the rest of you, um, doing it, getting it done. Josh is very humble. He's our head coach. So he, he's the one that leads all the other coaches in our company. He has a few clients like the amazing Nicole as well, where he personally coaches them. Josh is also the number one agent in his entire market, all brands. And then we've got my incredible business partner, Miss Katie DeWitt. What's your role, Katie? Hey guys, I'm in Eugene, Oregon as well. Um, I've been in the industry about seven years. I started a title um, company and then went into the team leader role at, uh, in the Eugene office. I also own a QW um, about 50 miles south from here. Um, I've been top, coaching the top 20% um, in, my, in my area for those seven years. And then I am now running the Rieger Coaching and Consulting Company. Yeah, I was able to, Katie was my team leader. She was actually Josh, so I'm out of Portland and they're both in Eugene. So Katie was Josh's team leader. And then I convinced her to step down from that role after five years and come over to the coaching company with me. So with that said, why don't we dive in? So Nicole, can you give us kind of a quick understanding of what's going on in your market? Is, is it crisis or home selling? Does, does nothing hit the market? Does nothing sell when it hits the market? Is there still multiple offers? Like give us the 30 second snapshot. If I, if I transported my business to your market today, what would I expect to happen in the next 30 days? There's definitely multiple offers going still on listings. I don't see the one in four like it was predicted. I still think it's probably moving back up to the one in 10 like last year's market more so. Uh, what the jumbo, what? Pretty interrupt. I don't know what one in 10 means. Like every one in 10 houses were getting multiple off, we're getting multiple offers. And at one point right before COVID, it was about every one in four. And, so, and now we're moving back to about every one in 10, I would say. Um, jumbo loan pricing is hitting, that price point is definitely hitting a lower. They're selling about 94.6% average and most markets so they're not getting multiple offers got it they're so actually going down in price points jumbo's taking a little more of a hit totally yep. makes sense okay yep. 
Yep. So other than that, buyers are still wanting to go look at houses. I feel like there's more, the, those first time home buyers are really biting at the bit to get out there right now because they feel like there's less competition and worried about rates going up is what I'm hearing from a lot of different agents. Um, but business is, I, they're, it's just about mindset. Okay. A lot of agents are doing the business and a lot of agents are stuck on knowing what to do. Are not doing the business. Yeah. Yep. You guys were one of the first in the nation to uh, shut down the city, shut down grocery stores. Yep. Um, if I'm correct for a while in, in, in uh, Washington, real estate was not essential. Is that correct? Correct. For about so, two and a half weeks. But it overall sounds like, hey, if I've got a good listing, I'm going to get it sold maybe with or without multiple offers, but it's going to sell. If it's jumbo or luxury, it might be a little harder, but more or less good listings are selling, well-priced listings are selling. Is that correct? Yeah, I think the other issue that we're seeing, um, like Trish put in the comments, is low appraisals. So um, because, you know, some park markets are going down, you know, that price that maybe you listed 30, 45 days ago may not necessarily be the same price. So we have seen quite a few. I haven't experienced low appraisals, but I know other agents are starting to see, you know, appraisals coming in anywhere from five to 15,000 lower than list price. Awesome. And Nicole, I don't have access to the comments, but uh, we're going to hit a Q&A section for about the last 10 or 15. So if you can read those to Josh, Katie and I, that'd be amazing. Yep, you got it. One of the most fascinating things to me during the, during the last three weeks is I'm learning technology because I'm used to having an amazing team around me that loads up things like this. And now I'm figuring out how to do it. So I actually, this is a big moment for me. I learned how to share a screen yesterday. So let's see how it goes. Awesome. <laughs> Like these are big steps for Craig. So I just want to start out with something that, that we've been going over with our coaching clients that I went over with my own personal sales team. We have a Zoom call with my, so just like Josh, I'm still in production. Uh, in fact, my team has put 10 homes in escrow a month to date. I'm very proud of that. Um, I'm actually surprised by that number. And one of the things we covered on our Tuesday Zoom call is things don't matter equally. Success is found in doing what matters most. That's Gary Keller. Things don't matter equally. Success is found in doing what matters most. Yep. Josh, what does that mean to you, buddy? I'm, I'm in on that. Well, you know, Nicole and I had a great call yesterday. And um, I can tell you that doing anything right now that's an activity towards selling real estate is the one thing that you need to be doing. Um, there is a, and I just learned this, but you have an agent put a, a Facebook post out there that says, I'm going to the store. If I can get you anything, let me know. Someone needs a loaf of bread. She takes them a loaf of bread. And now they're in contract on a home um, and a home listed. So um, any activity right now is more than, than the next person's doing. But I feel like people are getting in their own way. We're out of our habit loop. We're, we're getting bogged down with everything else in the home and not doing anything. So right now doing something every day that one important thing is more valuable than I've ever seen it in the industry. So not even. Is your team lead generating more or less now? Are they more focused now? Are they getting more done in less time? What does that look like now compared to a month ago when the world was normal? Yep. Uh, we've been at home for a month today. Hey, and we cur our morning stand up through zoom. Now um, I asked them that first couple days just to do 15 minutes. Said. So, talk to a few people, just do something, knowing that if we got in this rut of not doing anything with 60 days being about the time to create a habit, we could be in really big trouble sitting at home feeling sorry for ourselves. So we started with 15 minutes, a half an hour. Um, most of the team now is doing two half an hour call sessions, um, kids at home, pets at home, very real. Um, and we are more productive. Um, Craig, we also have 10 in escrow and we're competing in a listing competition with your team and another coach Adams and another coach Darcy's. Um, I think as a group, we've listed over 20 homes months to date, um, which is pretty incredible. Doing less actual time, right? More time prospecting. Yeah. I don't know if Josh froze there. You know, it was interesting. We have had a team of 11 and we asked our team, we go over this quote and part, this is a good exercise for you. By the way, those of you that don't have teams is a good exercise. Do you meet with yourself once a week to reflect on your business and plan your following week? I repeat, do you meet with yourself once a week scheduled in time block to reflect on your business and to plan the following week? You don't have to have a team to do that. A team just holds you more accountable.
Well, yes. So we met with our team and we asked this question. We have this as a quote. We always have a quote. We always talk about what it means. Things don't matter equally. Success is found in, what, in, in, found in doing what matters most. And we asked our team, like, is this different to you? And they all, all 11 of them, yeah, it's totally different. And I kind of wanted to grab them. I love them dearly. It's like, you knuckleheads, we've been talking about quotes like this for the last five years. But you understand that right now it matters differently to them because everything's different. They're homeschooling their kids. They're doing virtual showings. They've got just world is upside down. So in a weird way, we would think we've got more time to accomplish what it is we want to accomplish. And I would argue for my own team and the people I'm coaching, we've got less time. So they've really realized that, hey, I've got a couple hours a day or a half hour a day, or Josh, when you started this two mo- a month ago, I had 15 minutes a day. What one thing can I do right now that will help me get in front of the right people that could help me procure a buyer or seller? So I want to kind of open with that. Like, what are you guys doing right now? And this is for each of you to kind of an- answer silently in your own head is what activity are you doing? Who are you putting yourself in front of? Uh, what conversations are you having? To me, what's most fascinating about this market is my C leads are becoming A leads. My unmotivated three, six, and nine months out, we're in relationship with them. And they're like, Craig, I've got to sell my house tomorrow. I've lost my job. My business is failing. Whatever it might be, like, come and sell my house tomorrow. And then, of course, some of my A leads, which is the initial shock, they became C leads, right? The people that were currently buying homes, a group of them said, I lost money in the stock market. I don't want to buy anymore. Or, or hey, I, I'm in the construction business and I'm worried about having a job 30 days from now. I don't want to buy anymore. So <clears throat> my point to this is, is success is found in doing what matters most. <clears throat> I want you to add to that underline right now. This is about success in today's market is about finding the motivated more than ever before. Craig, talk- I've got a number for you. Talk to me, buddy. Uh, 2008, about 4.7 million homes sold. 2017, about 5.2 million homes sold. Two completely different markets, still roughly 10% of all of the homes on the ground in the United States of America sold. So good market or bad market, about the same happened. Yeah. And so when you say A's to C's and C's to A's, and it's something we've been talking about on our, our, um, our coaching calls and really hammering at home, is we've never had an opportunity ever in this industry to just go down a list of old leads, names you've got, and straight to the point, has the current economic situation changed the trajectory of your real estate goals? No? Boom. Are you looking to buy or sell in the next 18 months? And you can put everyone back in a pipeline. So we've really never had an opportunity to be able to be so direct on these types of calls and have people home alone that may actually want to talk to you and let, let you qualify them. Um, not making light of a very, very serious situation, but us making income and keeping our businesses going is very serious as well. So please see this for the opportunity that it is. Absolutely. Um, next, I just want to talk about these numbers. I'll take us off the share mode. Uh, thanks for the text, Katie. Um, these are the numbers of your market. So Nicole, when I look at these numbers, what was your search criteria? Where right underneath says uh, new listings 250. What did you search for that? Just King County. Okay, so if we're looking at King County, I want to go pre-pandemic. Pre-pandemic in King County, was there a price point in that search, Nicole? Nope, I just did all of King County. That's why you're amazing. Pre-pandemic, there was 250 listings taken the first week of March. There was 375 listings taken the second week of March. 45 the third week, Uh uh-oh, the pandemic's hitting, the world is changing, we dropped down to 347, and the last six days we're down, we're at 342. Ladies and gentlemen, are you in a good or a bad listing market? Good. You're in a really, really good listing market. Your market had more listings hit last week than you had prior to the pandemic. Let's look at pendings. 346, 460, 522, kind of pre-pandemic, the world's still kind of doing really well. We start hitting the, the, the heat of the pandemic. We dropped to 399, we dropped to 349. Ladies and gentlemen, are people buying a lot of homes in your markets? But when I look at this, if I've got a seller who's maybe thinking, some of you on this call right now, Josh, you might be one of them. If you lived in King County, you might have a seller thinking, geez, I might in a month, I don't know what's going on in the market, da-da-da. 
I want to go over numbers with you. 522, 399, 349. Is there less home selling every single week for the last three weeks? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. There's less, right, Josh? Yeah, yeah. 522. Okay, so if you wait a week, what will 349 turn into? 320? If you wait another week, what could that turn into? 280? I don't know, but I see a very clear trend of pendings in King County from 522 to 399 to 349. Is that good or bad news for a seller? Bad news. I think it's bad news. I don't actually, I don't know if it's bad news, but what it means is if you listed your house with me on March 17th, 522 buyers made acceptable offers. If you listed your house with me on March 24th, 399 buyers made acceptable offers. That's way down from 522. And if you listed your house with me on April 1st, 349 buyers made acceptable offers. Where, where I want you guys to use, own, and live with inside these numbers is to pull them every single week, just like the amazing Nicole did to prep us for this call. Every single week, you should know pre-pandemic, how many listings took place, how many escrows took place, and every single week afterwards, you wanna compare what's going on in your market. I really believe this more so than anything else. Human beings are terrified of what they don't know. And we have a lot of uncertainties in the world right now. Every one of you that is part of this webinar today, you are experts in one single field, and it's called real estate. There's a lot of uncertainties out there. Do I get to go back to work? Do my kids at some point get to go back to school? Will my senior get to play his final year of football? How sad is it my daughter is not going to be at her prom? Like, we have so much stuff we're dealing with, but there's one thing that we can do is we can educate our clients on the numbers of the market. So ladies and gentlemen, I ask of you that every single week, if you do nothing else, you continue this amazing chart that Nicole has put together. And if you're in a different county, do it for your county. Nicole, how long did it take you to pull these numbers? Like seven minutes, maybe. Okay, I so you got the first time. Andrea wanted a bigger area because I just did Federal Way. So she <laughs> emailed me and we had like seven minutes to get it done. Okay, so it took you seven minutes. Yeah. Do you agree if you sent this out to your database, that you would get business from it. Mm -hmm. So right below is my numbers. Here's my numbers in Portland, Oregon. Let's just go to pendings, 819, 772, 582, 467, 418. Is my trend going up or down for pendings? 817, 772, 582, 467, 418. Is it going up or down? Going down. Going down, Katie. So we sent these numbers out to our database last week. We had multiple people call us up, say, Craig, get my house on the market right now. These were not even leads. They weren't even leads, Nicole, where I was like working with them. Like, hey, Nicole, I don't know if you should list or not. Like these were just people in my general database that called me up saying, Craig, based on these numbers, I was thinking about selling in six months, come over today and get my house on the market. Would that be helpful for all of you? Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, Robin brought up a good point too. She said that um, one of those weeks, remember we were shut down that we couldn't even show properties. So yes. I mean, there, that could be a place of why those numbers were, were slower because the agents weren't even allowed to show. Josh and I have been working on this exercise all over the country with some of the top agents in the world. And we've got agents hanging up on our coaching call saying, I got to go. I got to go. Because you understand top agents don't exactly know what's going on in their market either. And, and they see these numbers for their local market. And they say, I've got a bunch of people to reach out to. You understand the first couple of weeks of the pandemic, all we did was just kind of check in with people like, how are you? What's going on? Right? We're not selling at that point. We're literally checking in on, on our database, our sphere, our clients, and our friends. And after we move out of that, we transition into data. Data, data, data. It's all we hear about on the news as well. Data of the, the virus. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your job to deliver the weekly data of the market to everyone that's in your database. Social media, phone calls, emails, text messages, direct mail, deliver this data. And when you deliver the data, what shows up next is called results. 
and then you start getting results and you help that person who owns a small business and they're forced to sell their home because they need that equity to keep their business going. And it actually becomes, I got to tell you, I'm having the most fun in real estate that I've had in years because it, for, for me, it means something again. Like I'm actually able to help people and it's always fun to help people buy a big, beautiful home or sell their home. The people we're working with right now, They've got real reasons that they're buying and selling. We've got people moving from California to move up to Portland to be closer to their elderly parents. Like there's something special about what's out there, but we can give them the data and we can help them interpret the data and it makes them move or, or not move a little bit faster. We're okay with clients that don't, the data doesn't work for them. Okay, cool. You went from being an A to a C. I'm okay with that. But there's another group that is like, wow, based on that, I need to move right now. Um, so yeah, those are the things we're seeing in the market. Uh, Josh, what, what are you guys doing with your coaching clients right now? Oh boy, whatever they need, right? Um, it got all, all around the country. So it's interesting to go from Seattle to San Francisco to Houston to Florida and just kind of see it work through. Like we were able to talk to someone in, in New Jersey two weeks ago and it was no big deal, right? It's like, what are you all talking about? Um, luckily we were able to put some strategies in place and get, get them ready. But there are three things that, uh, at, at this desk right here, uh, after three days of working from home, I mean, this could be bad for a lot of people. It's going to be bad. It's not going to be bad for me. I'm going to fight it. Right. What can we do? And I sat here for 20 minutes and thought, you know what? I don't know what's next. I don't know anything like this is the first time in my career. I can't put a metric or a past situation to this. I thought, you know what? I'm going to slow down. I'm going to slow down for myself and for my family and get grounded again on what I need to be doing to be there for my team and, and move forward and be a leader. Um, that's something that I have not ever said that I wanted to slow down, but in this moment, I, th I think that that was the right move. So collected thoughts and just took a deep breath and said, we're in this. Um, the next thing that came is money matters. Um, looked at expenses, um, looked at opportunities. Um, is there anywhere that I could be spending that I'm not? Um, and honestly, some of that was buying um, $10,000 certificates from local small businesses to, to give to um, clients is thank you gifts in the future now and in the future um, but money matters if we don't take care of ourselves and our businesses first we're in trouble right you, you put your mask on first put your oxygen mask on first so wanted to make sure we had a money plan uh, looked at reserves and and made a plan there with money um, and then the last one is is the big one I believe it's are you in a growth or a stability type model I don't care what you were doing two months ago, what your business plan was. If there's not any adjustments, adjustments to that, um, chances are you're in trouble, right? So do you need to stabilize your business or are you in an opportunity to grow? And, and honestly, with the clientele that we have an opportunity to work with, a lot of them are actually in a growth opportunity. They've, they've got the funds. They've got a little uh, bit of savings. Um, going and they can grow their teams. They can take over a new farm. Um, they can take over farms of agents that may be getting out because they're not doing anything right now, right? Um, other agents are going, you know, I don't have a follow up plan. I don't have a 36 touch. Um, I'm not doing enough, or I don't really like how my business has been. And I've been so busy pretending to be busy in the last couple of years with busyness. I haven't implemented very good systems. So you've got some people going, you know what? I've got the time right now. I'm going to prospect a little every day and I'm going to sit here and restructure and use what most people know. Most agents are, you know, go to classes and know this stuff, but haven't implemented it. So we've got a group of clients that we're helping finally implement what they know so they can use it. And we've got teams specifically that say, you know, we're 10 now. I bet we could be 25 in six months to a year because I think a lot of agents maybe going in that direction and that's not for everyone but it's it's very real right um i heard redfin just got some bad news so there's going to be some opportunities for growth right so slow down 
I've had this here for a month, right? Slow down, money matters, and are you in a growth or stability short term right now in your business? And I think if you can go through with those and make a plan around each one, at least you've got a plan you can control and you've got something to do every day. And so that's what we've been doing with uh, every client just to make sure that, that we're all together in this and doing the right things. Pretty amazing, Josh. I mean, you opened with slow down on a leadership call we had a month ago. And my wife must have quoted you 10 times in the first 72 hours. And she said, Craig, you got to slow down. Craig, you're frantic. Craig, you're too stressed out. Craig, you're, you're not focused. Slow down. Take, take your head coach's advice. Take Josh's advice. Slow down. Um, I challenge each of you to find an hour a day to go outside. Um, I have been more selfish with my time than I have been in five years. I'm taking a minimum of two hours a day to myself or with my family that I've never taken before because I've worked so many hours. And I can share with you that my results, I'm not bragging when I say, hey, my, my team's put 10 homes in escrow this week. Understand the two weeks before was zero, uh, plus six sale fails, is that it's because as a leader of my business, which each of you are leaders of your business, my mind is getting stronger, my health is getting stronger. And to Josh's kind of point earlier, back to the quote at the beginning is, I might only be working four or five hours a day, but I'm so laser focused and my mind is so sharp, I'm actually getting more done in those four or five hours than I used to get done in 12. So I challenge everybody to make sure in the slowing down, you're taking some personal time to get away from the madness and to just breathe. And in Josh's next point, this is a foundational. I, I really believe that, that God has given us an opportunity here to build the foundation that many of us have skipped. Many of us moved on to have successful real estate businesses without having a database, without having a touch system, without having a consistent uh, a way to, to get in front of our clients, family, and friends, and to give them the numbers that I just showed you that your market, to, you, many of you as agents didn't know those numbers, your database needs to know those, but now a lot of you are like, crap, I don't have a database. Okay, cool, we'll pull up the numbers, find five people, send them to, you now have the beginning of a database. Next week have 10, you now have a better database. Next week have 25, you now have a great database. Like the slow down is go to fundamentals. Go to the things that, that, that will, will make you successful. Because I will promise you this, Josh, there's two similarities you brought up. 2008 or nine's numbers versus 2019 saying, hey, either market a similar number of homes sold. There's another similarity between, between recent and 2009. People need us right now. In 2009, the people that called me said, hey, my sister lost her job and needs to short sell her home. Can you help us? Hey, we, we, we've been transferred or we finally found a job in Connecticut. Can you you help us sell our home. The people we're helping in 2009 really needed us. And what I'll argue now is the people that are, are buying and selling, many of them really need us. And, and the best way to, to make that happen is to strengthen that relationship through a touch campaign. So slow down is part of that. Money matters. Uh, we have, most of our coaching clients have cut in excess of $5,000 a month, either from their business or personal expenses. I repeat, our coaching clients on average have cut $5,000 a month in business or personal expenses. What can you cut? What is it that you have a reoccurring subscription for and your visa gets charged for it at $20 a month, month after month after month? Where can you save money? And then finally, as Josh said, growth or, or stabilization. Um, I needed to stabilize. I needed a couple weeks to stabilize. I went away, I went out of town and, and I stabilized myself and I got my foundation rebuilt in just a week and now we're already back into growth mode. So just be really aware of where you are. I think those are outstanding points, Josh. Thank you. Um, do we wanna to go to some Q&A, Nicole? Absolutely. If you guys just want to put your questions in the chat, I can uh, ask them or if you guys want to raise your hand and unmute. Uh, Lauren had a question. What do you say to the seller that says, um, well, I'll just let this blow over and then I will list so that I can get top dollar? Share screen. Look how good I am. Look at, look at me. I'm a sharing screen expert. Here's what I say to them in my market, Lauren. Here's what I say in my market. 
817-772-582-467-418. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, what are you waiting for to blow over? In my market, in just four weeks, there's been 50% less sales than there was four weeks ago. It's so going in the wrong direction. It's spring. It should be going the other direction. So it's even bigger than that, right? So I think that's why I want you guys to know the data is I didn't know what to say. I did not have a freaking clue what to say. And I see other agents in my market and they're posting, oh, there was 400 escrows last week. What the hell does that mean? What if there was 2,000 escrows a month ago? Give them the data week over week over week. Any intelligent seller will say, well, I'm not going to wait for it to get worse. So I don't say anything. I just show them the data. And, and my intelligent sellers say, Where, when do I sign? I want to know why they think that's true. All right? What, where... We have to know where they're coming from. So obviously coming with more questions. So what do they know that we don't? Um, and I think bigger than anything individually with helping someone is what's their next move, right? Do they need that equity? If it's, if it's really important and they need that equity to save a business or to save a retirement, go to work. Their demographic may be different you know, the numbers may be different uh, from price point to price point, neighborhood to neighborhood. So yes. I, there's no blanket script. That's what's so great about this. It's great. It's different. And that's how we're approaching it is every single person and everyone you're talking to is a human being with a need. And more than ever, they need us to find out what that is. So this isn't a just give someone a, a script to list their house. And, and honestly, there's listings right now that we haven't taken because of comments like that right if, if they're if if a seller isn't motivated enough to sell and be where they need to be on price we probably don't need to be listing an overpriced home right now and affecting the rest of the market and taking team energy focusing on doing the right things right so dig more into that i'd want to know how they know if they wait they're going to be better the news why josh is the greatest great. business partner in the, in the world because he's right like I'm not that uber aggressive where I just start yelling numbers at him I would ask a lot of questions and then based on their answers I'd give them the data and say guys based on what you've told me it sounds like you kind of do need to sell you're just weighing out do I sell on April 15th or August 15th now let me show you the data of where the market is heading and you make your own decision yeah there's here's here's a script for that or something that you can use and I love it thank you Peloton right um, in an agency relationship, uh, we give options and they make decisions. Slow down. Let's talk about this. I can meet you on Zoom. I would generally come to your house, but let's get on Zoom and let's talk about your situation. Yep. yep. People are more than willing to talk about their situation in a time like this than any other time that I've experienced. And I agree with Josh. Talk on Zoom. You're at, what is it, Josh? You've got the stats on this. What percentage of communication is verbal? Uh, we got 55% is body language, 38% is the tone, and 7% is the words. So, so should we be having these, in, these really important conversations over the phone or via Zoom, knowing those stats? Well, I would take all this back and even go back to rudimentary of like, do you guys have a setup at home to have these calls? And if you don't have that, then I would assume you don't have a setup to even be working efficiently. So someone kind of brought up to me the other day about how working from home, like they're all of a sudden they're freaking out. They're like, I've never worked from home. And I thought that took me about five years to be able to start working out from home. Like it was every excuse in the book, like my gym, my, my garage was too cold. I didn't have the TV and everything. And once I got my environment set up, then the habit created. Right. And so it hit me the other day when I was explaining that to my friend, I was like, is my office set up at home? How, I, don't, I don't have five years to, to get a new habit to build working from home efficiently. So I think as you guys begin to, right, like look around yourself, like think about what you had at your office, was your heater there? Did you have your, your, your pipeline ready? Whatever that looks like, start just with just your environment, like Josh said, slow down, look at how you're set up before you even have these calls. Because I see couches, I see living rooms, I see, I don't know, I think someone's on the bathroom right now. I don't know where Wait, you guys are. this is Greg's guest bedroom. This right, is yeah, bedroom. right. <laughs> But you know what I will say too, Josh, you've been consistent every single time on that spot in your, on your calls. So 
consistency, whatever's comfortable for you guys. Um, yes. This is all, these are all new challenges for, for us. And if we're not even comfortable with ourselves, even make that call, that's step one. Awesome. We got a lot of questions. What's the next question, Nicole? Good job, Katie. I don't have any other questions so far. That was it. So oh, something in the chat. Maybe I'm making stuff up. Yeah, we'll talk I'm sending it oh. to you themselves. Okay, Wait. so somebody well, said. Someone's asking what was the percentage. So I took, I got, I wrote them down. Yeah. Oh, okay. Perfect. And it's ranch only shut down for two days. So low appraisals. Here's what I'd say on, on low appraisals. This is tough Craig coaching. So who cares? Right. So number one is how many of you were on listing appointments a month or two ago, gave somebody a price and now fast forward two months later, the world has changed. Has that happened? Nod your head. Mm -hmm. It sure has to me. So number one is anybody I gave a price to six weeks ago that's going to hit the market this week, we're giving an entire new listing price before we go on the market. We just have to. Uh, we've got two or three low appraisals going on in our team right now. Like, it sucks. Um, and I'm sorry that's happening in your market as well. Well, the world has changed. So Mr. and Mrs. Seller, well, let's go back to what Josh said. Let's ask questions. Do you still need to sell? What's your motivation? What are you going to do with the money? Where are you going to go next? Why is that important to you? That and that was, money matters, Rieger. It, when, when this first happened and we first all started working from home, the first like holy crap moment was we've got 38 escrows. I can't lose those. All team on board that very first meeting, we went down every single escrow instead our, you know, check with the buyer agent, check with our seller, make sure nothing's changed. We spent the first three days going through every single escrow and protecting those first. That's what I mean by money, money matters in that sense, right? So because it changed, we went and reevaluated everybody's motivation, situation. We got price reductions on homes that I had sellers that said they would not reduce the price a month ago, right? Awesome. It was 60 days on the market and they're going, take it down 30. We need, we, let's go. Right. It's like weird. That changed really quickly. They're an escrow now, by the way. Um, so hopefully you got that too on money matters. Go back to anybody that's in escrow and obviously protect that. Yeah. Bulletproof the transaction on the appraisals. It's it's we've got half of our sellers are would not have negotiated for the lower appraisal price a month ago. And now with the changes in our market, they are like it's it's the world's going to change for a little bit. The motivated, it's our job to keep it together. And the unmotivated, uh, it's not going to work out. It's just, it's going to become a gamble for your sellers. If they go back on the market, can they do better than this low appraisal? And if they can take that gamble, then it falls apart. If they can't take that gamble, then they're going to throw some cash in. They're going to net less than they thought they were going to net when they opened that escrow based on the time the appraisal happened. It's, it's unfortunate, but it's part of that natural nasty shift that happens over the first few months of a transition. Uh, what other questions do we have? Are there any others? We love questions from at us. Ideas to grow your database when you can't network in person. Um, Trish, feel free to unmute yourself. I'd love to, to coach you through that. And until you do, I guess my first question is, um, did you just move to your office? Uh, did, what do you mean? Trish, how long have you lived in the, in the area you live in? I have lived in this area for 15 years and I, shame on me, but I, I did new construction for most of that time. Couldn't do resale. I am now uh, on the architectural committee of my HOA. And so I've been marketing to my neighborhood with a sponsored newsletter. I'm doing an Easter bunny walk through my neighborhood because I have an Easter bunny thing. I'm doing an Easter coloring contest. So I've been doing a lot of video, a lot of bomb bomb to my database and um, Who cut your hair? yeah. Who what? cuts your hair, Trish? Excuse me? Who cuts your hair? Do you have a hairstylist? My hairstylist is my best friend. So she, I've already done uh, four deals okay. with her. So she's in your database, perfect. Who does your nails? Um, where do you get your car washed? Who's your favorite waitress? Like. Think back of, you shake your head no, so maybe I'm going the wrong direction. Like, I guess if I got an hour with you and I, I asked you a hundred questions, could we find people that know you well that aren't, you're not marketing to? If you lived in your community for 15 years, is there people that you could find right now and add to your database without even like doing much work? 
Well, we have talked at the 90 day, 90 listings in 90 days. And one of the things that I was going to be, was doing and getting prepped for, and that was, I was going to door knock the businesses in my uh, neighborhood. You can't do that. That's over. I can't do that now. So that's gone. Yeah. Years, in the 15 years you've lived in your community, who is it that's not in your database that could be tomorrow without knocking on their door? I, I don't go to the doctors. I don't have kids in sports. I don't have a husband with coworkers. So it was, it, and my hairdresser is like my best friend. Um, you know, I'm looking for a new dentist. So the hairdresser introduced you to a bunch of her clients and you guys can do a happy hour and you send a bottle of wine to each one of their houses and you do a happy hour in two weeks. Like there's going to be ways to grow your database virtually. Yes. Well, and that's what I'm looking for more ideas on that. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like. What was it, advocate. Trish, that attracted you to real estate? Well, I started actually in new construction. So I, when I went into resale, I had one bad habit is I was used to my business walking in the door to me. Okay, so I so had. Now, is, that, is that where you live now, the, the subdivision? I do live in a subdivision. That's the, on my HOA, yeah. But is it the subdivision that you sold or the new construction? Is that where you live now? No, this, uh, I worked for the builder in the subdivision, but I did not sell this community. Okay. Is it in your local area? Well, yeah, because I live here. What, what year was that? 2005. I would think I you're the expert of that subdivision. Um, if you got into it because of new construction and you're comfortable with that, it seems like a, a real high potential that maybe reintroducing yourself or rebranding yourself in that area because you initially sold those homes and worked for the builder, you know the homes well. Um, yeah, that's what I've been doing for the last six months because I'm on the architectural committee and I started a newsletter, a monthly newsletter, and um, you know, uh, I had planned events for spring through summer through fall. And, and since I can't do the vets, like I said, I'm doing a Easter egg coloring contest. And I'm doing um, an Easter bunny walk through the neighborhood. So, but I just started that six months ago. How can we creatively get every name and phone number for? Everyone? Well, I have every name because I have, you know, they're in through title. And I do have some people's uh, phone numbers and emails when they contact me on architectural committee changes. So, and so everyone is basically my database with the address and some have phone numbers. So I'm working on that right now. Dennis, got it. I'm, I'm asking about the subdivision that you originally sold at, not the one that you're in oh. the architecture committee now. Oh, okay. Oh, gotcha. Well, I sold many subdivisions and there's a couple of them I wouldn't want to resell in regardless. <laughs> you don't have to do those. It was, it was, I like asking the question why people got into real estate because I feel like if they stay close to their heart and their passion, they're more willing to do something. Yeah. So, you know, just an idea. Thank you for answering. No, there's, there's two other communities that I, uh, the builder sold. I wasn't the agent on there, but I do know the builder and how the builder built the houses and everything. And I am um, putting them also on my uh, newsletter. I'd find a way to get their phone numbers and reach something. out to them. Yes. The technology's out there. You should be able to find 25% of the phone numbers. Uh, what's the Money Matters website? It's Josh, I don't think it's a website. It's just a mantra that you coach to. Am I incorrect there? Yeah, that uh, the slowdown Money Matters and growth or stabilization came here at this desk three days into this. Um, I've got 200 books up here, and when I need to when I need to slow down and think, I, I come to a quiet place and I think and I write and I do that type of thing. And so this just came out of what made sense to me in that moment. And it hasn't changed much, uh, much today. There's Let's no go back to Lauren what? at 341. Lauren had a great question. So Nicole, if you could unmute yourself. Nicole, how often do you hear from RCC over the last 14 days? RCC coaching. How many times have I heard from you guys? Well, how I did. I get a daily email from you guys of tips to handle things. And then uh, Josh and I have a weekly call and then he texts me 
quite a few times throughout the week. So our calls on Tuesday and Monday, he'll ask me like, what's our win for this week? And um, I love it because we have accountability as well. I have to text him every day because it's on something else we're doing. But so I, I, it's, he's in my business and I feel like involved in it just as much as I am, if not, you know, so he's along as a partner along the way, but you guys are giving me tips and tricks. It's almost like what this call is every day as you're testing out the things that you're doing. Thank you, Nicole. You're amazing as always. So let's go back to Nicole. Where would that go? 341 or what time is it? Are you, are you sending out data stats every week to your entire database? So that was Lauren at 341. So yeah. Nicole, I just want to recap. We give you every single day a touch from RCC coaching because that's what it is. We send you a touch every single day. Yes or no? Yes. Do you remember prior to the pandemic how frequently you heard from RCC? Every week. Every week. So let's, let's go back to Lauren at 341. So that's my coaching business, Lauren. Let's go to my personal sales business. In my personal sales business prior to the pandemic, you would hear from me two to two and a half times a month. So if you're a past client, a family, a friend, anybody that we thought could be a buyer or seller lead, you would hear from us always twice a month and sometimes two and a half times a month. We now are reaching out to our personal database of buyers, sellers, past clients, and family friends three times a week. Three times a week, we're sending market stats. We're sending information about what's going on in our community. Um, they're not long. Uh, uh, if you'd want, Nicole, I'm happy to share. Actually, you could just share uh, today's coaching tip with the group because that's what we sent to our database yesterday. Um, we are, so Lauren at 341, we are, we are touching our database as many as three times a week when previous to the pandemic, we're touching them less than three times a month. So and I'm on, I am one of your um, people that are coached and I are. love it. And I Hello. love my, coach and it's been amazing. And I actually feel like, sorry, how to like, it's my son's 17th birthday. So I, after I heard Happy birthday. Happy birthday. getting into the screen here, I figured I'd jump on and just ask my question. The reason I asked that is because I am one of your guys's things. And so I'm getting all the emails and oftentimes I just change that script and send it out to my people. So I just didn't know how often you guys were, were doing it. Cause I'm obviously not in your sales market. So it's three times a week. You're sending some sort of something, right? Yeah. I don't believe that as long as we're sending statistical data, I do not believe we can over communicate with our database right now. Got it. I do not believe it. For the one out of a thousand that says unsubscribe, there's 50 people that I'm helping their family who's through a tough time. So this is, this is a time. It's not like, oh, sell a home with Craig. The market's great. I'm not sending that bullshit. I'm sending good or bad. Here's what's happening in my market. Here's some charities we're getting behind that are helping our local doctors and nurses. Here's some organizations helping our local restaurants. Here's what's happening in the market. That's what I'm sending. And no one is saying unsubscribe. In fact, they're calling me and saying, oh my gosh, my brother's a bartender. Could you hook us up with that organization? He really needs help right now. He's unemployed. You know, you cannot over communicate right now, ladies and gentlemen. If there's the only reason I went from zero escrows to 10 escrows in nine days is because for the last 25 days, I've been touching my database three times a week. So how do we get a... How do I get onto your database so I look like a seller in your database so I can see those emails? Just, you've got, I emailed you about this webinar because I know you're a coaching client. I appreciate it. You just email me and I'll have Andrea put you on as one of my clients. Okay. But Thank the bottom line is, ladies and gentlemen, is are you communicating with your database enough? Because that, that's what this is. That's all this is about. And it's not any, about anything, any communication right now is great communication. Craig, for the first two weeks, we weren't even talking about real estate to our client. Our first interview was with the state director of the Small Business Association for small businesses. So that our clients could reach out to people in their community and help the small businesses. So yeah, just anybody. Who can you help? Who can you communicate with? Real estate stats, great, do it. I mean, we're getting there and, and Craig does a great job of it. We've done another angle of just talking to people, just something to stay in front of them and offer assistance. Josh, you went on a ramp last week. You're like, we're connectors. We connect people with home inspectors. We connect people with lenders. We connect people with title companies. He's like, right now, we just oh. connect with people. 
I lost my mind. I said, we're built for this. I'm worried about your real estate business. We sell homes. We put people in contact. We are, we are an industry literally made up of connectors, right? You could give your entire day to try to help a small business and tell me that's not going to come back and help you. Right. And it's going to help your community. So we are built to win in times like this if we choose to. Right. And that's the thing that is great with our coaching clients is it's choice. And every single one of them that commits to doing something every day, something, I don't care what it is. They're all winning. Every single one of them are winning. Agreed. Um, is there a uh, JLo? I'm going to give you the mic in a second. Cause you're my favorite JLo. But before JLo, is there any other questions we can answer for anybody? Yeah, I have one, but it can wait a second. I have another one. Go ahead, Lauren. Um, so what would you say to a buyer that says, and maybe it's the same back to the stats thing, but what would you say if a buyer says, well, since the market's going down right now, I might as well wait a few months to buy um, so I can get a better deal. What would be the direct? What makes you think you're going to get a better deal in a couple months? That's true. So here's what, so here's what we're saying to the buyers directly um, is we're saying that in our market, here's the big difference in my market. If you were a well-priced listing a month ago, you would have had 20 showings in the first weekend, first four days, 20 showings, three, four, five offers, a well-priced listing in the right neighborhood. In the market we're in now, if you're a well-priced listing in the right neighborhood, you're going to get seven showings and one to two offers. Mm -hmm. So showings are down about 70%, but the offers are still coming through pretty damn strong. Now, here's the problem is that there's not enough buyers out there. If that seller overprices their home and they go through those seven or 10 buyers looking in that neighborhood, looking at that kind of home, looking in that price point, and they miss them, they're now kind of screwed like never before. And the sellers that have to sell are dropping their price pretty aggressively. And there's opportunity for the buyers to jump on those price reductions and to get a better deal than they could have gotten a month ago. So although we're in a very strong market with a lot of multiple offers is that there's not enough buyers running around right now that a seller can miss that first week on the market. And so we're sharing that with them. We're sharing the low interest rates. Um, we're sharing. So one of the stats you didn't see is we're looking at price reductions. We had 352 price reductions in my market last week. So we're sharing that with buyers and saying, Hey, there's 352 sellers that lowered their price. If you want a good deal, there's 352 people that just said, I want to sell my home more than I did yesterday. We should go and look at their houses. Um, and yeah, Lauren, we faced that in 2008 as well when houses were going down $5,000 a month. Um, it's about finding the motivated. There will be a group of people within the group that want to buy now and are okay with the best deal they can get now, which is probably a better deal than they could have got 30 days ago. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, JLo, I know you wanted to talk about your amazing coach. Katie, I know that we've got two more amazing events we want to invite you to, both in the next 14 days. All of you can attend. And I've got to jump off because I've got a four o'clock. Um, but JLo, the mic shares, then Katie, and I just appreciate you guys so much. Thanks, Craig. Good Thanks, to Craig. Stuff. All right, take care, guys. Here we go. Okay. I just wanted to share about uh, my coach, Bernadette, who has absolutely changed my life in the last two and a half months. She is amazing. She's doing what Nicole said. Um, she is um, sending me emails. She's communicating with me. She shares my wins. She's motivating me more than any other coach that I've ever had. And I've had two others that were that did not do that. And I just wanted to share that, that uh, Rigor Coaching has done an amazing job in meeting my needs where I needed it. So, JLo, I wake up every morning. Thank you for sharing that. Why we do it? Say that again. That that review right there was why we do what we do. That's amazing. And uh, I just put my phone number down for you guys if you have any questions about coaching or any of this material that we just talked about. But I want to share with you guys uh, next week. Let's do some screen sharing. Um. Next week, we have Chris Heller. Um, if you are not, did I, did I share that right? Yeah, you're good. 
Yep. Is this the flyer? I've never done just one thing. Um, we have Chris Heller next week. He's going to be talking about what to do during this. If you guys do not know who Chris Heller is, if you're newer to KW, he's our former Keller Williams, former CEO. Um, he was, he's been ranked as the number one agent in the world at one point. I mean, he's amazing. Um, of course, ran the number one real estate company as well. So if you guys put book this on your calendar, April 16th, 3 PM, um, you go to Craig Rieger's uh, Facebook and it will just be live right there. Of course, I'm going to share it. Josh will share it. So if you have any connection with us, it'll be live on our sites. Um, but yeah, that's, <laughs> that's going to be mind blowing. We are going to have, um, some questions a little bit, the same thing we can text us, call us and, um, and keep the ball rolling with that, which is amazing. Um, and then the other thing that we have is in two weeks from now, if you want to purchase, we're doing a six week seminar and we're just doing that once a week live. Um, it's $99 per person or a whole office can purchase it for just $500. So, um, and that's for any size office. So even if you have 200 people, $500 for the, for every agent to get access to it. Um, and so that is, um, starting in two weeks on the 22nd. So if you guys are interested about that, or you guys want to pull together, um, we'll let you know, but that's just weekly because we know that every week something's different. The scripts are changing daily. I love Josh opened up and he said when this started, he had what, like 38 pendings. Like, first of all, way to go, Josh, you're insane. Um, Craig's talking about just putting 10 in this week. So these our coaches are boots on the ground. They're constantly changing their scripts and things and they're willing to share everything. So anytime Craig during the call or session says like, oh, I just sent this to my database yesterday. That's all life information that we're sharing. So that's kind of how we roll as rigor coaching and consulting. We we're boots on the ground and we, we, we kind of just network together with the top minds and give you guys everything we have. Um, but Chris Heller is uh, one of our main connections. So you guys, I hope to see you guys on that. And if you guys have any other questions, we so thank you guys for allowing us to be on this call and, uh, and to hopefully the information helps you guys. Cool. All right. We're all good? Yes, we well are. Done. All good. Thank you, Katie and Josh. Thank you guys. You guys were awesome. Thanks for having us. And we'll, we'll connect soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Nicole. Bye. Lauren, you asked a question. I'll get, I'll answer that for you. What did you say? Can someone tell me what the line was that Craig used around a yeah. better benefit? He literally just said it and I was writing down as fast as I could. <laughs> this is recorded, so I'll send it to you afterwards and then you can go back and listen. Perfect. Will you tell Kobe I say happy birthday? birthday? I sure will. Tell Kobe I say happy birthday. I'll call him later and wish him a happy birthday. Uh, <laughs> I, have, I, have, I, have a, I have a question for you, Nicole. What up, JLo? Did, did I hear you say that Josh, that Josh is your coach? He is. Lucky him, right? Yes. <laughs> Lucky him, that's right. So you're awesome. Just how long have you been coaching with him? I don't know. Two months, right? Two Almost months. three, yeah. Almost three. We're well, on same a second 45 day goal and it ends May 6th. So. Yeah. So, oh, so, yeah, I too. remembered. <laughs> So yeah, he's awesome. He's really fun. I'm yeah. a lot of handle, so he does a good job of like bringing that in. Yeah, you owe me a text with... today that I didn't get. I haven't done it yet. Okay. Yeah, cool. I'm on it. I got okay. it. You know, okay. it's really funny. On our bike ride yesterday, Strider's tire blew, and we had to walk the bikes all the way back. And he was like, "Just have Dad come pick us up." And I was like, "Nope, we are walking the bikes all the way back." So <laughs> it was quite, quite the adventure. Oh. Well, just because Josh, you're on here and you're part of that coaching, I will say that she is that, that she is coaching Bernadette's coaching me in my whole life, not just real estate, and it's amazing. Uh, personal things that I would not have done if it hadn't been for her. So um, this is the best thing that's happened to me and I'll, I'll, I really have appreciated you guys. Thank Hello, you so I love, much. Yeah. Jay I will love share that, that back to her. But believe it or not, I know a little bit about you and your business because we've, we've talked. Um, we want you to win. So as long as you keep showing up like you are, then that's why we do it. And um, Thank you. I mean, you mean you've you've Bernadette. talked to Bernadette about me? Little bit. Uh, Everyone <laughs> talks about J Lo. Come on, Jerry. <laughs> well, I hope it's all, wonderful. Hope it's all good. It is good. Oh, I have a quick question. How do I get in the email list? They mentioned that you can get in an email list for the next chat or 
a Zoom video? Katie, yep. you can I get, just wrote that down there for you. That. So yeah. it's Katie at RiegerCoaching.com. So if you send me and just say what you're looking for specifically, because we, we talked about a couple different things, or if you guys have a question or follow up, um, use that email and I'll follow up directly. And also my cell phone's listed right below or right above that as well, the 503 number. And again, I'm pretty casual. It's my cell phone. That's my direct line. So if you guys need to just let me know. She is really good and responsive too. So yes, she is. Very persistent. Yeah, yeah, very very persistent. Yes, that's very a good one. Persistent. She is persistent. <laughs> Are you going to coordinate our the six week thing, Nicole? Um, you can, I'm sure Katie will handle that, but yes, I'll get it out to everyone. So I just was curious. Yeah, yeah actually I was, Nicole, I was going to text you about that to see if you guys could, if you, if your market center would be interested in that. I figured your, you guys would be. I think it'd be good. Yeah. yeah I think it'd be great. Count me in. Cool. Yeah. Well, well, me too. <laughs> yeah. All right, you guys. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank Have a good one. Bye everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh my goodness.